My name is Nathan Wade, N-A-T-H-A-N-W-A-D-E. Good morning, Mr. Wade. Good morning. Um, prior to filing this motion to disqualify, you and I were friends, correct? Yes. And, in fact, I supported you when you ran for judge in 2016. You did. I wore your shirts. My kids wore your shirts. Oh, Mr. Merchant, Fines. your personal opinions have no relevance. Okay. And, uh, I, uh, I mean that in the best way. That's All completely right. fine. Let's I will get move to the on. point. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. I, totally fine. Thank you. Um, you filed for divorce from your wife on November 2nd, 2021? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, in that divorce proceeding, did you file... Um, answers things such as interrogatories i did okay and so interrogatories are where you're responding to things that basically answers that the other side is asking yes ma'am and um i've got your complaint for divorce i'm just going to mark it for the record as defendant's exhibit two um the first interrogatories that you answered those were december 27th 2021 is that right they're about this month. Okay. And in those, um, you were asked different things, but those are sworn. You actually swear to those. You verify them, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and so that verification is where you're swearing under oath that everything in it is true? Yes, ma'am. And let's see. The, um, you were asked if you have any documents for, which relate to the purchase of gifts by you to any person other than the defendant with whom you have or had a relationship, romantic relationship, from the date of your marriage, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you responded under oath that you didn't have any documents to that. That's correct. Okay. Um, you again responded to an interrogatory. You updated those responses on May 30th, 2023? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you actually sent those directly to opposing counsel in the divorce? Yes, ma'am. So. Um, but in that one, you answered none again to that question, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So May 30th, 2023, you said that you didn't have any documents showing any purchase of anything with someone that you had a romantic relationship with. I believe the interrogatory was, was gifts. Okay. Not anything, gifts. And I, and I have it if you want to take a look. Um, I'm going to mark, okay, so, so just for the record, I've got your complaint for divorce marked as number two. I've got the verification and the interrogatories from 2021. I'm going to mark those as three. And then your May 30th, 2023, I'm going to mark as four. Um, Judge, may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. That is what I marked as four. This is what I marked as three. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right, if you take a look at what I marked as two, three, and four. Just see if you recognize those. I do. And um, are those, that's your divorce complaint? Um, and then your 2021 interrogatory and your 2023 interrogatory, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, are they a fair and accurate representation of what is filed in that case? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'd move to admit those into evidence. And is this is two, three, and four? Um, it's two, three, and four, yes. All right, any objection from the state? The divorce? No objection to three and four, and subject to Ms. Merchant's representation that two is a filing of divorce. I just don't have the divorce complaint. I don't have that in front of me, but subject to that representation, no objection. All right, and by show of hands, any objection from other defense counsel? Seeing none, defendants two, three, and four. Uh, this should be Romans, well, we'll just saw them, two, three, and four, admitted without objection. Um, so that interrogatory that you filed in 2023, that's the one where you said no, that you didn't have any documents um, relating to the purchase of gifts um, that you had a romantic relationship with someone, right? Number, which interrogatory are we talking number about? Number four, 2023. Which number in the interrogatory? Number four. So which number interrogatory are you referring to? It's defendant's exhibit number four. I have defendant's exhibit four here. Uh huh. Which number in the laboratory are we referring? Oh, which like which number out of the questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, hold on. 
because when you've responded, you put number one on all of them. You so. just point to it. This one. This one I'm talking about. This number one, where this tab. There's two number ones that are tabbed. Okay. And there's no page number, but it is the second page. All right. They're asking if you have any receipts for restaurants, hotels, bars, things like that. First number one? I believe it's the second number one. The second number one? Okay. okay. So it asks you if you have any receipts for things like restaurants, bars, hotels, things like that, where you accompanied a member of the other sex romantic partner. Correct? It says identify any and all occasions. Okay. And so, it says to identify any and all occasions where you entertained a member of the other sex, okay, who's not related to blood, mm -hmm. and including dining, drinking, restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, all of that. Okay. And what was your answer to that? Not okay. So May thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. Prepared. You prepared this document. I did. Submitted it. I did. And it says none as far as entertaining a member of the opposite sex. It does. Okay. No hotels. No bars. No restaurants. Correct. Okay. Um, you again updated that. Let's see. You updated it on December twenty-second, twenty twenty-three. And I'm going to mark that as defendant's number five, and I have copies. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you updated it once again on January 26, 2024, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that one. May I approach the witness again, Judge? Is that what you're marking as defense exhibit six? Yes, Judge. I'm marking um, number six is the January 26, 2024 interrogatory, and then 20. Oh, that one. And then number five is the December 22nd, 2023 interrogatory response. All right. Are you tendering those at this time? Yes, I am. All right. Five. Any objection from any counsel to defense exhibit five and six? Yes, sir. No objection. Thank you, Ms. Cross. Seeing none others. Lovely. I have tabs <clears throat> for you. Um, so now that you have those, let's just talk about those for a minute. Um, those were verified so sworn under oath mm -hmm. okay and one of them was december 22nd and then of this last year so last december and then one was just recently submitted in january right mm -hmm. okay um in may may 20 what let's see may 10th 2023 judge thompson heard a motion to compel in your divorce case as well correct yes okay. and you were actually held in Willful contempt. Yeah, I'm going to object to the relevance of uh, his credibility um, is relevant, Judge. And if he was held in willful contempt for failing to provide answers and documents, I think that's relevant to this court. How is that a prior false act or 
crime of conviction or anything else allowed for impeachment under the rules of evidence? I, it, I'm not offering it as a prior bad act or something like that. I'm offering it towards his credibility, Judge, which you get to determine. Um, if he's made misrepresentations in these pleadings, um, you're, you're here to determine whether or not he's telling the truth or not. So if another court has held him in contempt and that's part of the divorce proceeding, I think it's relevant. But just contempt generally can be for many different things, like a, a failure for, to produce is not necessarily a false act, right? Right, and he's welcome to explain that. Right. He may not have to. Ms. Cross. I, I object to the relevance of that. That's clearly not an, a proper impeachment. Uh, we're going pretty far afield into divorce matters that don't have any direct relevance to anything that's pending before the court. Subject to the relevance of that and any further. All right. I'm not seeing uh, that being a proper grounds for impeachment. Uh, it's sustained. Okay. Let's talk about this December 22nd, 2023 um, verification. I tabbed it for you. Um, Again, they asked you if you had any documentations showing proof of this relationship, proof of any relationship, correct? I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question, and I don't believe that's an accurate read of the interrogatory. Right, let's be precise, Ms. Merchant. And, and you, please read it. I want to make sure I'm accurate. Please read it. Which, which number? This one actually has a number. I tabbed it for you, so you should be able to open right to the page. Um, it's number 22. The question specifically is if you have any tangible evidence of any nature in your possession or control or any other person or entity which relates to any manner of your activities to any person with whom you've had a sexual relationship during your marriage. Tangible evidence is notes, cards, letters, photos, films, recordings, documents, tapes, video recordings, receipts, invoices, and other tangible evidence. Yes. And you answered that you did not have any documents to that effect, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, that was on December 22nd, 2023? Yes, ma'am. You updated those responses again after the motion to disqualify was filed, though, correct? When was the motion filed? January 8th, 2024, when I filed the motion to disqualify you and alleged that you had a romantic relationship with Ms. Willis. Yes, After that, you updated these responses, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so your new responses, you now changed your answer from that you didn't have any of this to you're asserting the privilege under 245505, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and both of these are under oath? Yes, ma'am. You also updated your response to the question about spending time with someone other than your spouse for dinner, drinks, things at restaurants, bars, hotels, or the other person's home, correct? Yes, ma'am. So in December of 2023, you said no to all that, and then in January, after I filed my motion, you said privilege to all that, Fifth Amendment privilege. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I, just to be clear, was it... Sorry, I'm going to object the characterization of Fifth Amendment privilege. I think it was a statutory privilege, and that's, that's quite was, different. That's what I was just about to ask him. So that privilege covers infamy or Fifth Amendment privilege, correct? So it was a privacy privilege is what I updated my response to do. Once okay. you filed your motion to... I uh, intervened mm -hmm. in my divorce action. Um, I then figured that you were in talks with my uh, former wife's uh, divorce lawyer. Okay. Um, and because of that, um, I asserted a privacy privilege because I didn't want the uh, proceedings of my divorce to bleed over into the proceedings in this case, which is the case that obviously you're involved in. So your answer is in December of 2023 that you didn't have any documents about any travel that you took with Ms. Willis. That wasn't true, though, correct? They didn't ask me about any documents regarding Ms. Willis. A romantic partner. They asked you for documents regarding a romantic partner. So I'm sorry, I, I inserted Ms. Willis's name. Let me rephrase the question. They asked you for documents about travel with a romantic partner in December 2023. And you under oath said you did not have any of those, correct? I did not. Okay. And they asked me about gifts. I right. Never purchased a gift for Ms. Willis. And they asked you about receipts for dinner, receipts for drinks, hotels, bars, and restaurants. And you said you did not have any of those. I, I did not and do not have any receipts for any of those things. Okay. And part of the civil discovery, they say that even if you don't have it in your pocket, if it's within your purview, you got to get it and give it to them, correct? Your Honor, I'm going to object again to the relevance of the, the questions about the scope of civil discovery. I think she's asked him about statements he made in pleadings. Um, the answers are already in the record. And, uh... All right. To the extent you're trying to establish a prior 
uh, Miss Truth, uh, Miss Merchant, uh, I'll allow you to ask a few more follow-ups, but then okay. it's not there. We have to move on. Thank you. Um, so in 2023, December, you said you didn't have any receipts. I do not have any receipts. I did not have any receipts. But you did travel with Miss Willis in 2023, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2022, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2021, correct? No. So you only traveled with her in 2022 and 2023? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. That's what you recall? Yes. Okay. Um, so you just don't remember if you traveled with her in 2021? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. Is what you recall. My question is, did you travel with her in 2021? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So it's not yes or no, you just don't remember? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So you did not travel with her in 2021? Your Honor. No, this has been covered. Let's keep going. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Let's see, you um, you filed an affidavit in this case, correct? I did. Okay, and I marked that already. I gave it to the state um, as number one. Is it number one, may I approach, Judge? Okay. Thank you. In that affidavit, you swore under oath, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in that affidavit, you swore that, um, well, first of all, do you recognize the affidavit? I do. Okay. Did you sign the affidavit under oath? I did. And you gave this affidavit specifically to refute the allegations that I had raised? Yes, ma'am. Nobody forced you to sign this? No, ma'am. You chose to sign it? I did. And you signed it on purpose to, to admit into court to I refute did. allegations? I did. Um, you signed it specifically to prove that you were not in a relationship with Willis prior to November 2021, correct? Correct. And you were a lawyer when you signed it? I was. And you're still a lawyer today, correct? I am. When were you barred? 1999. Okay. And um, you believe that your relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney-client privilege, correct? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. I, I don't think that's factually correct. I don't think that's a relevant question, and I don't think it's appropriate to question this witness about the scope of his attorney-client privilege. Um, he's got an attorney who can speak for him for that, but questioning the witness, I think, is inappropriate. All right, so a lot to unpack there. Uh, the question was simply, that: does he believe there's a relationship that exists in the terms of attorney-client privilege between him and Ms. Willis? Is, is that accurate? Yes, Judge, assertion? it was. I asked okay. if he believed his relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney-client privilege. Okay, I don't see why yes or no would be barred. Well, I, I'm, I'm, maybe, I'm not mis maybe I'm not understanding the question. If, if the question is, does Mr. Wade and District Attorney Willis have an attorney-client relationship? It is not. There's no foundation for that. If the question to the witness is, does his relationship with District Attorney Willis impact his attorney-client relationship with his divorce attorneys, uh, that I don't think is an appropriate question for that for that witness. First, if, if uh, first I believe is a proper phrasing. The second, I think there's been a representation that Mr. Wade preserves and doesn't waive anything, and so I think asking him particular questions in order to potentially uh, backdoor a waiver is inappropriate, and that's that's my question. All right, uh, if we're just trying to again assess where a privilege does or does not exist, and we're not actually getting into it. Uh, I think that's, we can establish those, you know, uh, parameters, but uh, Ms. Merchant, can you rephrase the question based on that concern and we'll see where we are? Yes. Um, do you believe, you, that your relationship with Ms. Willis is, is subject to an attorney-client privilege? Not if you and Ms. Willis have one, but do you believe that that relationship is subject to, to one? I, I'm going to object to that question as it's phrased. In what context? Uh, any conversation with his attorneys is privileged. Uh, that, that, I think, is, is clear. What's not clear to me from that question is, is that is Ms. Merchant asking, in the context of your communication with your attorneys, is that, is that or outside that context, is it? Right. Um, and, and Ms. Merchant, I think we need to figure out what, what are we getting at with this. I'm, I'm just trying understand. to figure out if he thought that their relationship subject to an attorney-client privilege. I mean, it's been asserted. I think it's going to be asserted, and that's, that was all I was asking. 
Um, I mean, the, the actions themselves wouldn't be an issue. It's more right, communication. Someone saw, someone saw them, someone had knowledge of it. Is that attorney client privilege? I want right, to know. Well, I, I guess I would find his legal opinion on this isn't, isn't okay. relevant. We can deal with that as it comes up. So, <laughs> sustained. Um, in 2022, um, in this affidavit, you swore that you and Willis developed a personal relationship. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said that that didn't, that didn't develop until 2022, correct? That's correct. Okay. And that's different from what you said in your pleading in May 2023 in the divorce case, correct? No, ma'am. In May 2023, when you were asked if you had a, um, if you'd had any affairs, essentially, and you said none. That's correct. Okay. So in May, you said you had not, in May 2023, in the divorce case, you said you had not had a personal relationship, an affair, a romantic relationship with anyone. That's correct. But you told this court in the affidavit that you did have one that started in 2022. So that would have been ongoing at 2023. So here I think there's a distinction, if you'd allow me to explain. Please. Um, the interrogatory um, asked the question, during the course of your marriage, um, or, or to date. It actually says, I'm going to request that the witness be permitted to answer. Mr. White. So my marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015, ma'am, um, by agreement. Um, my wife and I agreed that uh, once she had the affair in 2015 that we'd get a divorce. Um, we didn't get a divorce immediately because my children were still in school and I refused to allow them to grow up without their father at the time. So we waited. We waited until the youngest graduated and we dropped her off at college and then filed for the divorce. So if you're asking me about the interrogatory as it relates to having uh, the 2022 relationship with District Attorney Willis, I want to say, because my marriage was irretrievably broken, I was free to have a relationship. So the question, though, was if you had had a relationship. And in 2023, you said you did not. And that is different than what you said in this affidavit, correct? No, ma'am. I said during the course of my marriage. So in so you believed it to... Let me finish, Ms. Merchant. So in 2015, my marriage was irretrievably broken. So I did not have... A relationship with anyone during the course of my marriage. Um, and in that interrogatory, they asked you if you had any receipts for travel with someone of the other sex up until the time you were answering. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you didn't. You've already testified to that earlier. But in this affidavit, you said you swore that you had travel expenses and shared expenses on travel with Miss Willis. Again. During the course of my marriage, I had no relationship or uh, receipts. I'm not asking about during the course of your marriage. Your Honor, I'm going to ask the, the witness be allowed to answer the question. Continue. I have no problem with the answer. Um, as it relates to receipts today, I don't have any receipts, ma'am. So you don't have any travel receipts um, available to you for any travel that you did with Ms. Wells? I don't have any receipts, no ma'am. Um, no receipts that, so, so you're, you used your business credit card for these trips, correct? I use my business credit card for everything. Okay, I guess. Um, you used it for your kids' tuition? Yes, ma'am. You used it for personal travel with Ms. Willis? Yes, ma'am. And you have receipts from those business credit cards that you have to file with your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No. I, I, I file this statement. I turn over the statement. And whatever is there on the statement, the accountant looks at it. And the accountant says, okay, this is personal. It goes over here. This is business. It goes over here. Here are your taxes. So you have those statements. We'll call them statements instead of receipts. You have those statements, correct? I have the statements. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But when you answered the interrogatory under oath, you said you did not have anything to show the records of I travel with Ms. Willis. I answered the question. I had no receipts, ma'am. You had no receipts, but you had statements. I ordered the statement, yes, ma'am. You did order the statement. I did. Okay. And um, so, so we're just talking to semantics between invoice and statements or receipt. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to object, Your Honor, to the um, argumentative tone of the question. I believe it's an ask and answer. To the All right. So same. Um, in let's see. 
You also in this affidavit said that no funds paid to you for compensation as your role as special counsel was shared with Willis, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and that you never cohabitated with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, by cohabitation, does that mean that you never spent the night with Willis? I spent the night with him during spent trial. Night. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so when so I just want to qualify your term, your use of the term cohabitation. That means you didn't live together. That's correct. But you did spend the night together. Yes. When was the first time you spent the night together? Your Honor, um, that's the subject of his affidavit, Judge. Right, but it might not be the subject of this hearing. So the question is the nature and extent of the relationship. And so if they just spent the night on a single occasion, I don't, I, I would be, I don't think we're going to document in detail every single time that happened. And I don't intend to do that, Judge, but I think what is relevant is when the relationship started. And that's what you had indicated on. Well, why don't we start with that question and go from there. To that question. And that's what I asked when the first time he, he spent the night with her was. That's, okay. that's what that's I asked. That's a different him. question, isn't it? Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021? Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, describe your relationship at that point then. Which point? 2019. So I was at a judicial conference to teach a course, if you will, um, to newer judges. Um, I did that in 2019. Um, as I was exiting the conference, um, another judge was standing outside who was a friend of mine. I stopped and exchanged pleasantries with, with her. Um, and standing talking to her at the time was then Judge Willis. She introduced us um, at that time. We shook hands, exchanged business cards, and I got into my vehicle and left the conference. So that meeting was probably three minutes. Okay. When was the next time you talked to her? Didn't talk to her again, probably maybe a month or a month and a half had gone by. Okay, so you talked to her November, maybe? Maybe. On the phone? On the phone. Okay. How regularly did you speak with her in 2021 on the phone? In 2021? I'm sorry, 20, 2019. I'm so sorry. 2019. How frequently did you speak with her on the phone? 2019, after the meeting, I probably talked to her two or three times. She would have questions. Um, I was the district rep for the particular district that I sat in. Um, okay. And the judges would, when they would have questions, they sometimes would go to the rep. So she was outside of my district, but um, she would call me, she felt comfortable calling me to ask me the questions. I don't know if you know the, the racial makeup of uh, the certain benches, but it wasn't very diverse. So she felt comfortable calling me for advice. Um, and she did that. And we had also in common that she was starting um, a private law practice at the time. And I'd already had mine up and going. And we talked about balancing the demands of the, the bench with their private practice. So we didn't, we didn't talk that often, but when she had questions, uh, mostly legal issues that would come up, she would call me. I just want to make sure, because my question was just how many times, and you said two to three times, right? Okay. And in 2022, how frequently did you speak in 2022? This is um, before you were appointed. I'm sorry, perhaps this not just uh, your timeline. 2022? I'm sorry, 2020. 2020. How frequently did you speak in 2020? 2020, it was... Um, more more frequent than than 19 um, obviously but more frequent can you tell me approximately a month how often you think you spoke with her mm -hmm. on the phone Your Honor, I'm, I'm gonna object to the 
granular detail. Um, I, I think uh, Mr. Wake can certainly answer however he wants to, but if we're going to go through every time we spoke on the phone as opposed to generally characterizing the relationship, it would um, be more detailed than is necessary. Judge, I'm not going to go through every time they spoke on the phone. I'm asking for generally how frequently they spoke. At, the, at that level, that's fine. Overall. Thank you. About how frequently did you speak in 2020? Per month? It, I mean, if it was two or three times that entire year, you can tell me that. If, if okay. it was more than that, then you can quantify it by month. No, no, no. We, we spoke on the telephone often. I mean, I don't know how many. I couldn't give you a, a, a amount of time because you remember COVID happened and the world was shut down. But um, So we spoke on the phone more than 2019, definitely. Okay, let's, let's qualify it. Before her election in 2020, how much, how frequently did you speak? You mean as she was campaigning? Before the election. Before, yes, as she was campaigning, before she was elected. It's, it's two different animals. As she was campaigning before she was elected. Okay, so during the course of her campaign, um, we didn't talk as much, obviously, because she was busy. Fulton County is a, a large jurisdiction to cover. Um, so we didn't talk a whole lot, but she did know that I had gone through the election process. So when things would come up, um, if she had questions about it, she would call me and ask me. So And just to be fair, I, be, I'm only so witnessing Judge, actually, he's not so, asked and answered. And I mean, I don't mind him explaining, but I just wanted to know how many times. I mean, if we talk about every conversation they talked about, I. I he's gonna let you gotta let him finish his sentence, okay. and then if you need to redirect him or have me direct him, I can. Mr. Wade, you can continue. Yes. Sir. So, so sometimes it would be like a three-second call. She would go, "Have you, during your election, have you ever seen this?" And I would say, "No, but here's what I would do." And we'd hang up. Um, she had a lot of professionals working for her, but. Um, she trusted my judgment, so she called me. It, you know, it'd be a brief conversation, but she called. Me. So my question was, how frequently did you speak with her prior to her election? I, 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 <laughs> frequently, infrequently. More than 2019, um, but it wasn't a, a everyday thing. No. In 2021, before you were appointed in November. So January to November 2021, the only time I'm talking about. How frequently did you speak with Ms. Willis on the phone? In 2021, then it became frequent. Frequent. Yes. Okay. But you did not work at the DA's office at that point, correct? I did not. Um, so the affidavit that you submitted, um, you showed on it, you submitted one record that showed that Ms. Willis had paid a couple hundred dollars for one flight, correct? Say again? The affidavit that you submitted to this court mm -hmm. showed that Ms. Willis had paid for one flight several hundred dollars. Is that correct? Mm, no, ma'am. I think that... Are you drawing a distinction for her paying for a flight or for her actually booking a flight? Because those, those are two separate things. It's, I will re, I will re ask it. The affidavit you filed in this court, mm -hmm. you alleged that Miss Willis paid for one flight. Paid for one flight, correct? No, ma'am. You you no, did not allege she paid for one flight. No, ma'am. What I what I allege is what I allege is that our travel was split roughly evenly. So where you see. I have booked the flight or I've paid for a flight with my credit card. What you don't see is that she covered her own flight re reimbursement to me. The flights so, that the flights that you see here are the flights that she would have booked with her own resources, with her own car. And there's one flight, correct? One flight reflecting that, that she actually booked Miss Merchant. Let him finish and then you can redirect him. One flight that she actually booked, yes. The other flights I booked, she paid for. So the affidavit, you submitted one flight that she booked and paid for. Yes, ma'am. 
Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. The line in the affidavit is not as Ms. Merchant is representing it. It said examples of the district attorney, district attorney Willis purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds were attached as an exhibit. It certainly did not represent that it was the only example of the district attorney purchasing flights for um, Mr. Wade or for compensating um, other travel. All right. I understand, Ms. Cross. I think that's something you can... It's now on the record, but also something you can take on cross. Thank you. And, and just so everybody is clear, all I asked you is your affidavit. You submitted proof of one flight that she paid for in books. That's all I'm asking. Correct? With the explanation, yes, ma'am. Okay. It's all I needed. Um, you said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? Oh, it was cash. She didn't She didn't give me any checks. So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations? Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out if you do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you included those in deductions on your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No, you did not? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute then. Let's see. Um, so the only thing that you have actual documentary proof, not cash, is this one receipt that you attached to the affidavit? Is that correct? Your Honor, I object to that question. That is a mischaracterization of the assertion that is in the affidavit. I'm asking. So then he can deny it. I think he can fend for himself. Ms. Merchant. Is this the only written proof that you have of a trip she paid for? That I have? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you submitted the one piece of written evidence that you have that she paid for something. Everything else is in cash. Is that accurate? No. That's not accurate. Okay. Please tell me, what other receipts do you have then that show that she paid for things? I don't have them. Okay. okay. So this is the only receipt that you have to show that she paid for travel? That I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. In your divorce case, you filed a domestic relations financial affidavit, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first one you filed was in January 2022, right? Thereabout. Yes, ma'am. And those are under oath? Yes. Okay. And um, you also filed corporate taxes in 2022, correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, tell me about your, your business. Are you, do you have a partnership or are you a solo practitioner? As it stands today? Yes. So today, um, I have a separate PC, my law partner, has his own separate PC. Okay. So, but we're under the same umbrella, under the same roof. So we share expenses, we share income, and we split it. So are you a partnership? We are a partnership in the sense of we share expenses, we share income. Are you registered with the state of Georgia as a partnership? So, the WBC firm that included myself, Terrence Bradley, and Christopher Campbell, we were registered in the Secretary of State as a partnership right. um, for a short period of time. Um, when and that was dissolved then, right, in 2023? Yeah, I'm going to object to the witness answer his question. Mr. Wade, did you have something else to add there? I did. Um, when uh, things happened and we excused Mr. Bradley from that partnership, it left Christopher Campbell and myself. So now you have two separate PCs under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. um, sharing expenses and income. Okay. So let me just narrow down my questions then. Are you registered? And have you been registered at any time in the state of Georgia as Wade and Campbell? Wade, no ma'am. You've never been registered as a partnership? As Wade and Campbell, no Wade and Campbell, yes, thank you. But as Wade Bradley Campbell, yes ma'am. Wade Bradley Campbell was 
registered on April 1st, 2021, and administratively dissolved on September 8th, 2023, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Other than that partnership, you have always <coughs> been registered as Law Office of Nathan Wade? Yes, ma'am. Not with Chris Campbell? Correct. Okay. Thank you. So the affidavit that you filed in your divorce case, the first one in 2022, I think I'm up to number seven. I'm going to just show you, give you a group of exhibits so we don't have to go back and forth. I'm marking the 2022 as seven. I'm marking the 2024 as eight. I'm marking the um, the credit card statements as nine, and your taxes as ten. Can I have object to the taxes, um, the relevance of them at this point? Uh, the relevance of this entire business structure doesn't seem clear to me as either impeaching or relevant to the issues that the courts, uh, under the court's consideration. But insofar as we're talking about tax returns and other things like that, certainly that uh, should be redacted, and um, I, I would object to the relevance of it. I agree they should be redacted. I don't agree to the relevance, um, but I haven't tried to tender them yet, Judge. I'm just marking them right now so that everyone can follow. All right. And what is uh, the eventual relevance that you were getting at here? Um, well, I'm going to ask him because one of the things that we have to show in this case is a personal and financial interest. So, and he's talked about how he was reimbursed for these things, and so I have a I have a right to go into the veracity of the statements. All right. Um, so let's see, seven, eight, sorry, nine. And then 10. All right, so right now I'm just going to show you what I've marked um, as these exhibits. Can I see what you're showing? Oh, yeah, of course. They're all from the um, USB drive, maybe. Approach, Judge. Okay. I'm just showing you what I marked as seven, eight, nine, and ten. Just right. so you have them there, Robert, because I ask you some questions. All right. So, um, so these are sworn. The, the, I'm first going to ask you about the domestic relations financial affidavit. These are sworn. They're filed under oath, correct? Yes, ma'am. And the most recent one that you filed was filed on January 26, 2024? Yes, ma'am. So a few weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. And in that one, you said that you made $9,500 each month, correct? Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022, well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid $303,000, over $303,000? I was paid? Yes, in this case. Fulton County, by Fulton County. Uh, I see where you're going. So... <laughs> and, and Judge, I just asked him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask, answer the question asked. In 2022, isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. How much were you paid in 2022 then? So, what I was beginning to explain was Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited. As you have the bank statements, you see that. And then they are dispersed between the three of us. So there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. 
Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, obviously the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. So I did not get $300,000, no ma'am. And let me just clarify. My question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that the law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022? That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300000 came to Nathan Wade. Okay. Again, I'm not asking what went in your pocket. I'm asking, were, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in 2022? I'm just asking as a couple times. I know, but I think okay. we're dancing around the, the point there. So, final time, Ms. Mersh. That's fine. I can move on, Judge. Thank you. Um, so, you said that they were dispersed amongst all of you um, or put into an account with all of you. So, it's your testimony that for 2022, every check you received from Fulton County government went into an operating account with you, Bradley, and Campbell. No, 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 no. That's not what I testified to. Um, so, the, the, the way Bradley and Campbell firm um, established um, an account mm -hmm. when we decided to purchase a building in 2022. At that point, every piece of income that came into the entity went into that account. Okay. And then, after expenses were paid, it was split a third, a third, a third, right? Once that was dissolved, then the funds would go into a different account. Um, my account, one of my accounts. And then I would disperse the funds between now, Attorney Campbell and myself, one half and one half. Okay. Makes sense? It, it does. Let me, um, let me be more direct then. So the Synovus operating account that you had for Wade Bradley and Campbell. Yes, ma'am. The checks from Fulton County from January of 2022 until June 17th, 2022, those checks were deposited in that operating account. Yes, ma'am. Starting on July 15th, 2022, the checks you received from Fulton County up until May 26th, 2022, all went into an escrow account that you had at Fifth Third Bank, correct? No, not all of them. Some not of all them, of them? Some of them, yes. So, so it's your testimony that some of your checks from July 15th, 2022 up until May 26th, 2023, um, some of them went into an account outside of the third bank? Your Honor, I'm going to check to the, the relevance of, of the financial transactions. How much money you made is it's highly relevant in this case. It's the personal financial business and where, where the money was. And I mean, it's just to follow up on other things that he's testified to. And why is how much money he made relevant? Because he represented in a, in a it, it's very relevant. He filed an affidavit with the court saying, with another court, he told another judge that he made $9,500 a month. That's what he swore to. And All right, so this, this entire inquiry is just to try and, is to establish that prior and consistent statement. Yes. All right. Um, I, I'll give you a minute or two more to okay. try that, but we're Great. gonna have to move on. Thank you. Um, so, I know you're saying that you only got a third of the three hundred thousand dollars, but you were paid over. The firm was paid over three hundred thousand dollars in 2022, correct? So, Miss Merchant, it's not what I'm saying. It, it, it they're numbers. They're, they're there. It's, it's, it's the, it, it's the yeah. truth. The, the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account. Expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the 9,000 figure is what you had. Um, so that's where you got the 9,000 figure from? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's see. Let's. Um... Prior to when you filed for divorce in November 2021, um, you would use Mr. Bradley's credit card to pay for things with Ms. Willis, correct? And then pay him back in cash. 
I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. You've life. never used his credit card? Never. For transactions to anything with Miss Willis, out to dinner, anything like that. I've Hotels. Never, I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. I've never used anyone else's credit card. Not even my father's, and we have the same name. Um, and you'd pay pay back if you ever did use someone's credit card. You'd pay back in cash, though, correct? Ma'am, I've never used someone else's credit card. Um, can you take a look at the bank records that I gave you? That's the largest tab you have. For the record, which exhibit is this? Um, it is exhibit, hold on, Judge. It's exhibit nine. It should be the largest section you've got. Before there starts any yes. questions from the, the, the exhibits have been tendered and I maintain my uh, relevant objections. All right, let's see what the next question is, and maybe then that objection is going to be highly relevant. <clears throat> okay. Is that an accurate copy of your Capital One statements that you provided in discovery to? Um, that, is that an accurate reflection of your Capital One records? That I provided in discovery to whom? Um, to your divorce lawyers. Or, so, or that you provided in the divorce proceeding. Is the is the question? Does he recognize it by sight? I'm asking if it's his statement. Bank statement. I, I think that is the question. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, it's it's a thick document, but I, I believe you if you say that that this is this is what my wife's divorce lawyer gave you. I believe it. Your name's on every page of that document, correct? On every page? Pretty much every page. It's not every page. No, it's not on every page. No man. They're all Capital One bank records. Sure. Okay. Just take your time. Look through it. Tell me if there's anything that you think is not yours. No, no. They appear to be. Okay. Um, and those bank records show that you paid for travel with Miss Willis. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to object the relevance of these documents and the... Um, well, I think, are you tendering uh, Exhibit 9? I'm going to, Judge, and they're highly relevant to the, the well, whole Well, he's asking a question about the contents of them, and mm -hmm. they haven't been admitted yet, so why don't we start there? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Those show travel that you and Ms. Willis took. Well, so you're asking about the contents of something that hasn't been admitted yet, right? Well, I'm asking him if that's what it shows, because I know that they're going to object on relevance. Well, first we've got to see if it's uh, you've authenticated it, perhaps. And before we get into other details of what's in it, I think I can it needs to be admitted. That's fine. I, I move to admit them. All right. Um, object on relevance. On relevance. All right. And on that uh, overruled, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. Um, those records demonstrate that you paid for travel with yourself and Ms. Willis, correct? They, sh they should. Okay. And let's just talk about that travel. Okay. Um, the first trip is Belize in March 2023. Is that a trip that you took with Miss Willis? Are you asking? Did you take a trip with Miss Willis in 2023 to, to Belize? Belize? I did. Did you take a trip to California with Miss Willis in 2023? I did. Did you pay for those trips on that credit card? I used the credit card to book the, the travel, but un understand. She paid you back cash. Well. Let me say this. Let's take the Belize trip, for example, since okay. you started there. That was a birthday gift to me, so I paid nothing for that trip. Zero. Okay. So the, the charges that are on your card, she gave you cash for? She did. Okay. So all of the charges... Excuse me, I don't know if the witness had finished answering the question. Oh, did you have more? I did. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to get into the, the charges on the, the, the car because so traveling with her um, is is a, is a task you can probably imagine the uh, attention that that happens so for safety reasons um, she would limit her transactions um, I mean imagine trying to walk through an airport or sit at a restaurant or do anything. Um, so th there was no, th there's no attempt to con conceal. It's a credit card. Everything is here. So. And, and that's not what I asked. Okay. Um, what I asked was the charges 
for Belize in March 2023 on that credit card. Those are things you purchased to go with Miss Wa- with Miss Willis to Belize. Those, right? those are things that we booked with my card that yes. she paid. Yes. Yes. So those show up on your credit card. They do. And you're saying that she paid you cash to reimburse you for all of that. She did. And she paid you cash for both of your portions or just hers? Both. Okay, so that trip, Belize, just Belize, she paid you for everything on Belize? The entire trip. Okay. 